and welcome back to the International Down Low, where we give you the low down on the teams and players going to the International. From their humble beginnings to their biggest victories, their darkest secrets, and their most proud achievements. Their memes, their dreams, we got it all here, so let's get started. Today we'll be exploring the rising stars of Southeast Asia, the comeback kids that shot the world at the last TI, and are never the chickens, but always eating them. <laughs> Team TNC! The Southeast Asia region has been the brunt of many jokes in the pro Dota scene. For a long time, it was thought of like South America. Plenty of fairly skilled players, but lacking any discipline, no leadership, and hardly any competitive experience. For the majority of the professional Dota scene, nobody took the threat of a C team seriously, because they simply had yet to establish a foothold internationally. But a few years ago, the scene began to develop with teams like Fnatic and Mineski becoming more well-known and respected internationally. Players like Ohio and Mushi represented an enormous untapped potential in the region who could finally succeed with new organizations. Eventually, the regional teams began to gain respect internationally and teams from older regions would have to accept that C could certainly become a threat. One of these all-star teams was TNC. TNC was formed in 2013 and was quickly disbanded after a lackluster performance in the region. It faded into non-existence as quickly as it was formed and would be forever lost to time. Or so we thought. Instead, in 2015, the org reformed with five new players and began to compete again. However, the stack of the five unknown Filipinos failed to find a foothold in the region. For a year, they shuffled around new players in and out of the team. Finally, in 2016, something magical happened, and TNC found help from an unexpected place. This time, the team would have four Filipino players, Raven, Cuckoo, Sam H, and AU, and one player nobody in the professional Dota scene would have suspected. Jimmy the Demon Ho! With the experienced NA support demon as their captain, the orcs successfully qualified for TI6 and surprised the world with what happened next. Wow. Coming into TI6, the tournament favorites OG were expected to dominate any and every competitor who dared challenge them. In the lower bracket, TNC had to initially face off against VG Reborn, who they defeated. Everyone anticipated that MVP Phoenix would be their next opponent, but in a surprising upset, OG would face off against the Filipino squad, having lost to MVP. Many joked about how OG would sweep the loser's bracket all the way to the grand finals. It's a disaster! Destroying and demoralizing any teams that ended up in their path. But in a classic case of David versus Goliath, TNC stood up to the jungle team of OG. No one in their right mind would think that TNC could possibly stand a chance in this series. But where most would fail, TNC had the pride of a region that never had the respect that they deserved behind their backs. All eyes were on them, all the pressure of millions of dollars. And these kids destroy. TNC Pro Team were responsible for one of the greatest upsets at any international when they knocked out the double major winners OG. It was unthinkable, and audiences both there and at home were stunned. These were guys that skipped meals to save cash so that they could play at the LAN Cafe for just a little bit longer. These were guys that boot camped in an unair conditioned room in the hot ass Philippines with four mattresses, leaving one of them to sleep in a chair. This is a team that only recruited their new Captain Demon days before the regional qualifiers, and they just shit on the best team in the world. A new legend was born. Sadly for TNC though, Demon decided to end his trend of staying with organizations for a long period of time and instead quit the team, taking AU and Raven with him to Fnatic. Karma's a bitch though and they failed miserably live on camera in Valve's true sight, but that's another story. A uh, sad story, though, we're not really gonna talk about. What's not sad is TNC after TI6, who uh, didn't keep a hold of two of their players, the Filipino Huskar-loving carry Cuckoo and the incredibly talented offlaner Sam H. With only two survivors from TI6, it was time to rebuild, but it wasn't easy. They originally picked up Cast and Teehee after TI, but were quickly offloaded after two months following a rather pathetic display in the SEA regional qualifiers for the Boston Major. TNC needed to qualify, and fortunately, Fnatic's loss was TNC's gain. After Fnatic also bombed in the C regional qualifier, Sam H and 
Cuckoo convinced their friend and former teammate Raven to rejoin the TNC squad. The team with Cassidy Teehee had accomplished very little, but a top six at WESG 2016 Asia Pacific Finals actually qualified them for the 1.5 million WESG Global Finals in China in January. And that is where TNC were truly reborn. The WESG Global Finals was the only tournament to employ a rule system where players on each team had to come from the same country. So TNC were able to field their Filipino lineup. Outside of Team Ukraine with Resolution and Dendi, TNC's main competitors were the Swedish lineup of Alliance, the Peruvians of Infamous, and the Danes of Cloud9, all of which had their usual roster. Ah, but who cares about them? They're not going to TI. Okay, Infamous is, but uh, screw the other guys. They're dead. TNC topped their group with a draw against Team Ukraine, but a crucial win against Infamous, and the first seed guaranteed them a spot in the quarterfinals. But it didn't just stop there. Nope, they crushed Alliance and then took on the Danes of Cloud9 in a blaze of glory in the finals, winning a whopping eight hundred thousand dollars the largest prize win of their entire careers almost three hundred thousand dollars more than their top eight at ti6 they were welcomed back to the philippines as heroes wesg global champions they were invited to do tv interviews and even featured in their own music video together we conquer a world we made our history now the story can be told behold we unite not only that, but the Filipino gamers had grown tired of Maneski's monopoly in the scene, who had more than just games at stake. Did you know that TNC stands for TheNet.com? That's a rival land company to Maneski. Yep, this rivalry was both personal and corporate, and that's the best kind. The TNC brand now had a bright new future with a team that had been built from scratch, and a way to finally fight the man. <laughs> they had made it in the eyes of the public, but the team knew deep inside that it was not enough to prove to the world that they were a top team. A month later, after soaking up all the attention in their home nation of the Philippines, they headed to China for Star Ladder I-League Star Series Season 3, a true test of whether this lineup was truly gifted. Many feared it would be a harsh taste of reality for TNC and the Filipino fans, but they made it through to the playoffs, even getting a 2-1 result against Team Secret to finish top of their group alongside OG. However, top four at Star Series and first place at WESG was not enough to get them a direct invite to the of major they would have to go through the regionals which left a sour taste in their mouths or so they thought but during the group stage itself it went down as tasty as a big old bucket of jolly bee tnc arrived at the key of major and were the surprise of the group stage defeating evil geniuses 2-0 in the first round and then making their way past thunderbirds and digital chaos to finish in the top five out of 16 teams for a team whose results at wesg had been scoffed at just a few months before people were finally starting to take notice however the rng gods were against them and they were matched against faceless in round one one, their terrifying kryptonite. Faceless was famous for one thing, destroying C teams. And here, it had happened again. TNC had the raw talent, but they needed a new mastermind. They had Demon last year, but he packed it up and moved on. TNC made a bold move just days before their land appearance at Star Ladder I-League Invitational 2, as they flew in a new captain and drafter all the way from Canada. Theban 1437, and a reject MP reject, but TNC gold dust. Adding 1437 to the TNC roster was a stroke of genius, and he did not mess around. Making an impact as soon as he arrived, his first game for TNC was at Star Series LAN itself, and he took TNC all the way to the Grand Finals. A month later, top three at Galaxy Battles. Suck on that, Demon! With a new leader experienced in competing against North America, Europe, and China, TNC had an extra string to their bow, and after being the second best to faceless in the key of major qualifiers, it was time to take control of SEA. After TI6, TNC had been a broken team, but 10 months later in the TI7 regionals, they were almost untouchable. Just as they had one year before, they took the first seed and crushed the TI regionals. With faceless crumbling, TNC are the face of SEA Dota, the savage killers that will dominate the land for generations to come. Now, allow me to be real here. People think that NA pubs create hard players. Yeah, try playing an NC pub for once in your life and you will know true misery. These five have climbed through that hell and beaten all of their rivals to the point of making them irrelevant. These are the heroes of a nation, the pride of a people, and these guys know how to crush a team like a balloon egg. And the results of TI7 are shaping up to be equally disgusting. Now let's take a look at the players that make up this exciting yet newly experienced squad TNC. Unlike his teammates, 1437 or Rose is a highly experienced professional Dota player whose history began all the way back in 2011. For the last six years, he has played, coached, and trained in the art of professional Dota, and that experience is what allowed him to fill the role the team really needed more than anything else, a leader. The Filipino players of TNC have said that after TI6 and the departure of Jimmy, they felt what the team was lacking most was strong leadership. 1437 is more than a leader, he's also a very skilled player, and he should be able to provide both the moral and in-game support that his teammates needed to thrive. The charismatic 
Canadian has dabbled in a lot of things during his career in Dota 2, but the peak of his career, outside of him kicking ass for TNC, of course, was way back in 2012 to 2013, where he made a name for himself playing for Mouse Sports along with Sing Sing and Black. After TI3, he then made a big move and followed a group of four players to go live and play in China. LGD Gaming opened a secondary team and 1437 joined forces with Misery, PyCat, God, and Brax, who were all keen to learn from the Chinese scene. Okay, but let's be honest, people really only remember 1437's time in LGD Int after he became a bit of a meme for his G League intro post, which uh, he still can't live down to this day. In fact, I'm gonna show it to you right now to help a new generation know how beautiful this is. Yep. That's the one. Beautiful. Beeman has coached Team Secret in the past and was also even a panel member here at the Kiev Major. Ooh, Although it's not the most technically gifted player, 1437 has a mind for battle, and his ability to analyze the game, the view of the bigger picture, has kept him involved in the scene for the last seven years. An extremely likable player, Thieven has tried several times to grow the NA scene with teams such as the North American Rejects in 2014, who were later picked up by Na'Vi, or the American Cloud9 roster of 2015. But let's be real, uh, those were all dead ends. His most recent adventure was with EE's Team NP for the majority of the season, but he was getting the boot after DAC 2017, and not very nicely, damn. However, he was a free spirit, and TNC welcomed him with open arms and pointed him to which teams needed a good ass woman. He quickly dyed his hair again and got down to business. And now, that business leads him to TI7. Is his name still Rose? I have no idea. But we do know that the Rose has always had some thorns. Sam H was a god among mortals in his local net cafe in the Philippines. Even when he wasn't paying to play, his friends would pay for him. His skills were so widely recognized that his friends would pay for his time on the PC just so that they could join their team to win their bets against rival land cafe goers. I talk about that ass. But we all saw what he was capable of when he played Faceless Void at TI6. His clutch chronospheres helping the Filipino team come back from the brink of death to take down OG and one of the biggest shock results of the tournament. The season off laner Sam H has been TNC's star player and not surprising considering just how disgustingly good this guy is. Excelling at many of the classic offlane heroes like Bat Rider, Axe, and a bit of a cheap mix. Sam H is TNC through and through and has in fact not played for any other team in his career, joining the Filipino org two and a half years ago. His loyalty to his team and his country saw him stay with TNC after TI6 despite three of the former roster members looking for greener pastures. Sam H is not the kind of guy to leave a team that plucked him from obscurity though, and he stayed loyal when shit went down after TI6. He steadied his ship and led by example. Word is, when things get stressful in the game, the normally quiet Sam H is the one to talk louder, take charge, and keep his boys moving forward. Now that Faceless Void is back in the meta, Sam H already has one TI under his belt, you can expect that he's gonna the pain just as much as he did last year. Not much could stop Tim's from playing video games as a child, not even his grandfather, who decided to lock the gate to stop the TNC support player from leaving his house to play. Luckily for Tim's, who lived with his grandparents, his grandmother was on his side and snuck him the key so that he could escape and pursue his dreams. Tims was added to the TNC roster shortly after Raven's return and brings with him a positive attitude as well as experience in the support role, playing for Execration and Rave in the past. Last TI he was with Execration in the wildcard stage as was part of the side that surprised the shit out of the commenters, knocking out Complexity 2-0. He moved to Rave after TI6, but said that he did not feel at home in his new team, leading to a brilliant career decision to join TNC. Brilliant career move mostly because he owns his own land cafe in Sindalan, which he purchased with his winnings. You know, you're living the dream when you have to go from being banned from the land cafe by your grandparents to owning the land cafe. Tim's is best known for his earth spirit, and he has even admitted to me himself on stage that although he's not the best earth spirit player in the world, he is one of the best. And that's bullshit, because all it takes is one game to watch with a guy, and it's pretty obvious that he is the best earth spirit player out there right now. He's also a beautiful singer. trying to proc the Lincoln and they fucked up. A few inches later... Two thousand years later. The lost brother who defected to Fnatic only to return to become a hero, the real-life friendship of Raven, along with Kuku and Sam H, brought him back to the team that started his career. These guys aren't just teammates, they're blood brothers, and they had witnessed Fnatic's demise on stream and Valve's true sight. They had seen Raven heartbroken after Fnatic's run in the Boston Major Regionals, and they offered him a way back to TNC. After Raven returned, things started to look up with TNC, and it was more like the old TNC that we used to know. Their confidence returned, along with some new tricks Raven had learned when he was away. The holy trinity of Raven, Kuku, and 
Sam H. had finally been restored. Raven had tasted glory in the summer and defeat in the fall, but when winter came, he was a global champion at WESG. The terrible ordeal with Fnatic was all in the past, and Raven, who had the lead to find greener pastures, actually became the star when he returned home to where he started. From then on, Raven went from strength to strength, even smashing the world record in kills at a Valve event. Raven's monstrous specter murdered Thunderbirds with 33 kills himself in 55 minutes in the group stage of the Kia Major, and he only had three deaths. This was not a pub game. This is not a online scrim. This is a best of three on land against one of the world's top teams. Who would have thought that a lovely human being like this would be just such a savage? Many people expect easy wins against TNC, but after Raven returned, well, to quote the Raven, easy wins are never more. They call him the Filipino Huskar, the OG Slayer, but his name is Cuckoo. Sam H may have set OG up for the fall, but it was Cuckoo who smacked him down the stairs at TI6 on a hero many believe should be reserved only to pub games Huskar. It was a filthy pick that sent OG packing. After the win, Cuckoo said TNC picked Huskar because they believed there were no counters to it, and his team were happy to go all in and trust him that he could deliver on the largest game they would ever play. And he did. A young father, he is the flashiest and most outgoing player on the TNC roster. Cuckoo's first moments in the spotlight were playing for Mineski from early 2015 to 16, during which he helped Mineski to become the first ever Filipino team to qualify for a Valve event after reaching the Frankfurt Major. Top 12, yeah, okay, big deal. With TNC, though, top 8 at TI and $800,000 at WESG. That's a job well done. Cuckoo is TNC's mid laner and is a big fan of the classic mid heroes of old. We're talking your Lena's, your Queen of Pains, and your Templar Assassins. He loves getting right up in an enemy's face and laying down his own brand of Cuckoo Law. Cuckoo don't play safe, he play what? You knock him down, he get back up. He'll even play Tinker when no one else will, just to beat you. He has no remorse and a smile so wide you'll be thanking him for your ass kicking. Yet through all of this, he's a family man at heart. His Twitter feed is just pictures of his family and he calls his wife and daughter every single day. Cuckoo plays hard not for himself, but for his family, both on the team and at home. This is why he never seems to show fatigue. This is why he never slows down. He's fighting for a better life, not for him, but for the ones he loves, his family and his team. I want to say hi to my <laughs> daughter and uh, my family in P Philippines. This team, however, is more than just its players. Across multiple interviews, the team has said that they win by playing their own game. While many brilliant drafters create new fangled strategies that shape the meta, TNC believes that it does not matter what the enemy picks when they face them. What matters is their true playstyle, which they know they can win with. They trust each other to an almost irrational point, and they will always fight to the death. With 1437 at the helm, no one knows what the future holds for TNC. They might struggle to defeat more experienced and disciplined players. They might obliterate a fan favorite team once again and win the hearts of even more. But what they think will happen, and what we hope will, is hold that Aegis in the air and return home to the Philippines with millions of dollars. Whatever their fate may be, it will finally be decided at the International. Thanks for watching TIDL for TNC. It has been an honor and a pleasure to bring this one to you. Special thanks here to Kips, who uh, did a wonderful job giving us some inside info from her time on TNC. You can find her around the Dota scene, so uh, look her up. Uh, Cinnamon, also a random stream viewer who helped write this episode just because he was so passionate about TNC and who asked me not to give him a shout out. Sorry, Cinnamon, you were too good. Finally, uh, special shout out to all of our guys, normal guys, you know, Mouse Rick who hosts me write these, the sound guys, the editor guy, Casimir, all them. But a big, big shout out to Reflexkey. <laughs> Sorry to bother you, Slacks, but I believe it's pronounced. Reflexy. To Reflexky, who actually came from the community to edit this very video, who found the time through disability, raising babies, and helped me out. Please send him some love on his Twitter and his everything linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If you are interested in helping out editing a video, I need your help. Please let me know. Uh, shoot me an email at Sir Action Slacks. But if you're watching this far off in the future and this is already over and I have failed to complete all the teams or I've done the impossible, Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the International 7.